Almost 7,000 years ago, a superculture existed, which in my opinion, has the privilege of being the first civilization on Earth. This mysterious civilization took place in the holy lands of present-day Bulgaria. Sacred measures of artifacts support the idea that that was the first civilization of knowledge. Take, for example, the famous Pythagorean theorem. I maintain that a good heuristic point about it is to be discovered in one of the most significant artifacts of Varna, Necropolis, home to the oldest civilization of knowledge. This is a beautiful ceramic masterpiece, a bowl with gold decoration, which enables us to prove the Pythagorean theorem 4,000 years before Pythagoras was born. Later, in the Vedic literature, this means 1,500, 2,000 years later. Of course, the Pythagorean theorem can be found in the very structure of these fantastic masterpieces of stone and thought called the pyramids. Obviously, it was present in the heritage of uh, the Egyptian priests, the so-called harpedonapti, those rope stretchers who were able to position the pyramids, to systematize their proportions, and to produce this fantastic complex on the plateau of Giza, including the Sphinx, the Great Pyramid, associated with the name of Khufu or Cheops, the Second Pyramid, attributed to Kafra or Hefren, and the Third Pyramid, Menkaure.
our knowledge of the external world unfolds along two major lines or perspectives. For one thing, this is the material aspect. And on the other hand, there is also spatial or space-temporal aspect of the reality. I have been drawing my inspiration from two main sources. First, the study of measures and proportions from the world's famous and most ancient gold hoard, the one found in Varna Necropolis, dated 6,500 years back. On the other hand, was my study of the famous Zeno's paradoxes, outlined in an early paper of mine in Studia Logica as early as 1984. It was there that I launched a logical concept of the geometron as an entity that defies the infinite divisibility of space-time intervals. My approach springs from a fundamental idea by Max Planck about the so-called natural units. For example, the natural unit of distance is the so-called Planck length. It seems only natural that we should try and relate this sort of minimum distance, which still preserves the characteristic features of space-time continuum, with another cosmic measure of distance the so-called light second, exactly equal to 299,792 kilometers and 458 meters sharp. The outcome of this juxtaposition shows the logical interrelationship, a kind of synergy between fundamental constants. The ratio of two light seconds over the Planck length equals the product of three outstanding constants, namely the fine structure constant, pi, and an exotic variant of the golden ratio, derived with the help of the Fibonacci sequence. Of course, it is all about numerical values as grounds for the following conclusion. A match for the inverse fine structure constant can be derived from the ratio between the Planck length and the light second times pi over 2 times a variant of the golden proportion times 10 to the power of minus 45. Since two fundamental measures of distance characterizing spatial phenomena relate to the numerical value of the fine structure constant, we have good reasons to regard it as encompassing both matter and space. Those aspects of the reality show a glimpse of symmetry as far as the fine structure constant is concerned. It is a common feature shedding light on the intrinsic organization of those two ultimate categories. In antiquity, there was a motto, as above, so below. It was ascribed to Hermesus Trismegist and uh, took part in the motivation of a number of outstanding discoveries. Well, it appears that there could be a symmetry between space-time and matter based on the fine structure constant, which I wish to call the fine structure symmetry between space-time and matter. Take a look at this diagram following the white arrows. We can derive the Planck length value with the help of the four constants below. First, the light second, which has the dimension of distance. Second, the fine structure constant, which is dimensionless. Third, the pi number. And fourth, the modulated golden proportion, F, as defined previously. It involves a sequence of 30 consecutive ratios of consecutive Fibonacci numbers. The formula on top of this represents the synergy of constants. It has the same dimension as the light second since all other terms are dimensionless constants. 
the outcome of this synergy matches the value of the Planck length. A curious link exists between the light second and the fine structure constant. In my opinion, it also pertains to the codes of the universe. The value of the fine structure constant is usually rounded off to 1 over 137.035999. Here is what Richard Feynman, a celebrated physicist from the 20th century, has written about this mysterious number in his famous book The Strange Theory of Light and Matter. I quote, it is one of the greatest damn mysteries of physics, a magic number that comes to us with no understanding by man. You might say, the hand of God wrote that number, and we don't know how he pushed his pencil. We know what kind of a dance to do, experimentally, to measure this number, but we don't know what kind of a dance to do on the computer to make this number come out without putting it in secretly. It occurs to me that this outstanding number can be viewed in the context of a synergy of constants. We can even try and derive it with the help of two remarkable measures of length. For one thing, that would be the light second. In the second place, the Planck length will be involved. The latter belongs to the system of natural measures which Max Planck has proposed. The Planck length stands for the concept of minimum distance that still preserves the features of a relativistic space-time continuum. Beyond this limit, quantum properties come into effect. In keeping with what Richard Feynman has written, I have launched the following hypothesis. To my mind, it is possible to derive the value of the fine structure constant, which was introduced by Sommerfeld exactly 100 years ago, in 1960. But we can derive it in a different way, revealing the synergy of four constants, two of them known from contemporary physics. Special mention deserves the modulation of the golden ratio, which opens up new prospects for understanding the universe. With the help of these constants, the value of the inverse fine structure constant can be arrived at. It occurs to me this numerical value has by far broader meaning than the one originally ascribed to it. The Sommerfeld constant appears to relate not only to the physical entities, in connection with which it was introduced exactly a century ago. It also relates to the codes in space that shape the world as light brings life to matter. Light matters. There is more to it, certainly, much more than the properties and functions traditionally associated with light. Light actually shapes the world Perceiving here means to unleash the self-reinforcing intelligence of a cosmic trend which springs from the synergy of fundamental constants. For example, the speed of light in vacuum, the fine structure constant, the golden ratio and the related Fibonacci numbers. Logical patterns reveal the structural codes they're based on the light second, the measure that shapes the world. Is there a kind of a grand design, an archetypal code of light that converts chaos into cosmos? From this perspective, the great Pythagoras had a point. This code was encrypted in the interplay of proportions, according to him. He claimed that the music of celestial spheres was there for us to grasp, but not by means of our ears, 
rather to understand it in terms of mathematics and logics, transcending mere information, passing over from information to knowledge and from knowledge to understanding.